Hi guys. It's been another busy week at the Stomping Ups Woodworking Journal shop. We have a new member of the family. This is Ruby. She's a two month old miniature Australian Shepherd and she gets cuter by the day, which is lucky for her considering how much she pees and poops all over. In other good news, the weather's finally warming up around here, which means I'm in a better mood these days and Mustache Mike's mustache should be perking back up after its winter wilt. I'd forgotten about all these great stash shots we got when we were filming a commercial for Rockler a few years back. In fact, I'd forgotten all about that commercial until I saw it online the other day. I'm not sure if you remember it, but it was pretty funny. We filmed it like a silent movie with ragtime music in the background and an old-timey storyboard for the text. The best parts, though, are the shop pet cameos. Both the dog, Maya, and the cat, Luigi, have since died, so it was a nice surprise to see them in there. I'd forgotten all about that. The whole thing's about two minutes long. I'll link to it in the notes below this video if you want to watch it. It's pretty entertaining. Most of our videos have little ads in them, about 15 seconds long. That's how I pay my bills, just like you have to get paid at your job. But occasionally, we film and produce actual commercials for brands to use elsewhere off of our channel. And these are a lot of fun for us to make because they're very challenging. You have to tell a story in a very short amount of time. The two minutes in that Rockler commercial is long, usually about 30 seconds. And let me tell you, we agonize over every single second. I need five seconds here, but I can only afford four because I need six over there and so on. A 30 second commercial can take days to produce and edit. If you're a fan of the Highland Woodworker Show with uh, Charles Brock, you've likely seen me in commercials for the last two seasons assuming you don't just skip over the commercials. Last year, I was in a Torment commercial, which we produced for them, and this season, it's a Joburgs commercial. Now today, I thought I'd take you behind the scenes so you can see how that Joburgs commercial was made, the process we go through, the project I built for it. I think you may find this all kind of interesting. It gives you some insight into what goes on behind the scenes here, and really how pretty much any commercial you see, whether it's on the internet or even in many respects on television, is made. And at the very least, you'll get to see a cool little project. So the idea was to tell the story of a woodworker who's looking for the workbench of his dreams and what he might build on that workbench. I didn't have a lot of time to create a really complex project, so I decided to build a dovetailed box with a carved top. I wanted to use hand tools as much as possible so I could focus on bench work and therefore the bench itself. I'm working here with some nice clear pine, which I think is a very underrated material. Everybody seems to think that pines for beginners and serious woodworkers use hardwood. I don't know, I disagree, especially if you're creating mechanical joinery like dovetails by hand. Pine can be very difficult to work with. It's easy to crush and dent those soft fibers, so pine will teach you to be responsible with your cuts and chisel movements. Every cut has to be made carefully with very sharp tools. If you let the edge of a chisel dent the base of the tails, or you pry a little too much and bruise your pins, you're gonna end up with gaps in your joint. So pine is not necessarily for beginners. Normally when I'm filming, I try to make sure each camera angle focuses on the work being done or the subject being discussed. But this isn't a typical video for us, this is a commercial. So I had to focus on the brand as much as possible. One way to do that is with low angle shots like this one. People love low angle shots, they look artsy. Shots like this are important when you're making commercials because they help the viewers draw a conclusion, in this case that serious craftsmen use Joburg benches. Viewers also like short clips, which are taken from multiple angles. This is true in any video, not just a commercial. Eyes will glaze over and minds will drift if the images on the screen aren't constantly changing. I think this has become even more of a factor with the younger generations in the age of social media, so maybe the more seasoned viewers out there don't see it this way, but people nowadays do not communicate the same way as they used to. Everything is in little bites and snippets. Watch a television show from the 80s. They used to film those with one or two cameras. Now every scene is shot with 15 different angles that are constantly changing because anything that's on your screen longer than a few seconds is considered too boring and we just move on to the next shiny object. These are some of the things that we have to think about when we make any video, but even more so if we're producing a commercial like this because every second counts. I can't afford to spend 10 seconds on one shot. That's like a third of my runtime. 
I need two or three seconds here, two or three seconds there. You'll see what I mean when I start editing this. Fortunately, my dovetails fit together reasonably well. There are a few flaws, but they'll be easy to hide when I glue it up. Now at this point, I was short on time. So I used the table saw to cut the grooves for the box bottom and that carved top that I envisioned, it's not happening. I actually considered just scrapping this whole box and using older footage from a carved wine box that I made a couple years back, that was hand dovetailed and the top was carved right on the same bench. But I used that box in the Torment commercial in last season's Highland Woodworker episode, so I didn't want to use it again. This is a piece of maple and walnut I glued together for a video about making complementary curves with a router bit a couple years ago. I had it sitting around ever since because it just was too cool to throw away, and now I'm glad I kept it because I cut a rabbit on the underside so that it would fit in the top of my box, and then I put a profile on the edge at the router table, and now I have a nice looking top in about five minutes instead of like five days worth of carving. I only need a quick finish to bring out the color in the wood for the video, so boiled linseed oil will do just fine. I can always go back and add some shellac or wax if I want something a little more durable later. For most woodworkers, the project ends with the finish, but I'm making a video, so my work has just begun. All of this footage is loaded into the editing station where every second gets scrutinized. If this was just a tutorial video, as we usually make, I'd say around 50% of the build footage would be cut out. But here, I'm producing a commercial that has to tell a story in 30 seconds, so more than 99% of all the build footage I shot will never make it in this video. To understand why, you have to understand the story that we're trying to tell. A stunningly handsome woodworker, who's obviously a professional model, goes to sleep after reading a Joburg's catalog. Yes, the old-timey sleeping cap is a nice touch. Thank you. The rest of the commercial is a dream he's having. It would have been boring if he had just dreamt about the step-by-step -step of building a box. I wanted something whimsical. So we shot footage of plane shavings coming off the wood and falling through the air, and when you set this to slow, sleepy background music, it kind of gives the idea that someone's really reveling in his work. But I also had to show how the bench itself is instrumental to this process. So we shot more B-roll of close-ups of the bench's clamping features. That left only a little bit of time in the 30 seconds for the box itself, just enough to show you can actually make projects on the bench and not just shavings. Now here's the difficult part, closing out the narrative. The box appears on the nightstand next to the bed when the woodworker wakes up. This implies that with the right bench, your woodworking dreams can come true. But in order for that to work, the viewer has to know that the workshop sequence he just watched was a dream, not just something the guy got out of bed and did during the night. So to help reinforce that idea, I used a common dream sound effect, a circle transition, and a change to the sleepy, dreamy music to begin that dream sequence. The first version also had the sleeping woodworker down in the corner, so you could see him still sleeping while this was going on, as if the main frame was a dream bubble like you'd see in a comic strip or something like that. It was determined, though, to be too distracting, so it, it got axed from the final version. In fact, we went through several versions, sending them back and forth between us and Joburgs, fussing over every second. For example, the title at the end has to be on the screen long enough for people to register that there's something new on the screen, and then to read the text. I really wanted at least five seconds for that, but every second used here had to be taken from elsewhere. I had to settle for four seconds, and that was only after trimming the actual box build footage down to just nine seconds out of like two hours of footage. These are the challenges that are unique to a commercial for a show like The Highland Woodworker, or even if it were for television. In a regular video, I just fuss over the number of minutes, not the number of seconds. So here's the final version. I think it came out pretty nice. It tells a memorable story about a man and his dream workbench in just 30 seconds. That's no easy task, as you just saw, and while this isn't the sort of thing that we typically make, the process I went through illustrates what goes into creating woodworking content that people will actually watch, benefit from, and that pays the bills so we can keep making it. Someone in my line of work has to be more than a woodworker. We have to be writers, directors, producers, editors, graphic designers. We have to understand marketing and social media, and we have to endure all the folks who think making a commercial like this is somehow selling out. Those folks make me laugh because 
They'll watch television where seven out of every 20 minutes are commercials for some stuff that you don't even want. It's just random stuff they're trying to hawk to you. But if I put a 15 second ad at the end of a video that actually taught you something useful, and that ad is about a brand or product that you are actually interested in because it relates to the content of the video, well, they just go nuts. Whatever, well, I'll have to make a living. And I hope this video has given you some honest insight into how I make mine. Now it's time to sit back and have yourself a cold one because you've earned it, my friend. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.